The Ethereum merge, it's coming next month. And this is a day that will live forever in crypto history as this transition to proof of stake has been in the works for years and years. This merge has even earned itself a nickname, the triple halving, meaning ETH is going to reduce its supply issuance like three Bitcoin halvings. Extreme supply shock or ETH's worst decision? Find out in about 10 minutes because it's time for Chico Crypto. September 15th is the tentative date for the merge to go live, of which even Vitalik Buterin confirmed. Vitalik stated the terminal difficulty for when this happens and also said, this means the Ethereum POW network now has a roughly fixed number of hashes left to mine. Bordle.wtf predicts the merge will happen around September 15th, though the exact date depends on hash rate. If we go to Bordel.wtf, we can see it's still expected to happen September 15th. So yeah, the countdown is on. The merge is around the corner, only 29 days to go, and Ethereum turns off proof of work forever. 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 Let's now talk about why it's termed the triple halving. Everyone knows Bitcoin goes through a halving event about every four years. It's hard coded into the blockchain and it cuts the rewards the miners get in half like clockwork every four years. This means the inflation rate of Bitcoin reduces substantially each time. BTC inflation began high at about 30% before the first halving. By the end of that cycle and right before the next halving, it was reduced to about 9%. When the second halving commenced, BTC dropped to about 4% inflation. After the third halving, it dropped to about 2%. And as of today, the inflation rate of Bitcoin is about 1.8%. So why do they call the Ethereum merge the triple halving? Well, adding in the Ethereum inflation to the chart, we can see Ethereum's inflation has also been decreasing. But even with a steady decrease, the inflation rate is still higher than Bitcoin's. As of today, it's over 4%. But that's going to change drastically September 15th. Ethereum issuance on September 15th will drop from 13,000 new ETH a day to just 1,300 ETH a day. That means the inflation rate will plummet from above 4% down to just 0.4%. If Ethereum was to follow Bitcoin's reduction schedule using halvings to get down to that level of inflation, it would take three halving events, which takes Bitcoin 12 years. But with Ethereum, this is happening all at once. Now the next Bitcoin halving is scheduled to take place sometime in April of 2024. That means the inflation rate of Bitcoin will drop somewhere near 1%. It's going to take another four years or sometime in 2028 for its inflation to drop near where Ethereum's 0.4% is. But by that time, Ethereum's inflation rate could be even lower than 0.4. I'm talking deflationary, a negative inflation number. Why is this? Well, zooming into Ethereum's inflation over the past year, we can see there are times when Ethereum inflation drastically drops by over 0.4%, actually near a 1% drop. This is because of a certain upgrade Ethereum implemented back in August of last year, EIP-1559, the Ethereum burn upgrade. So what is this upgrade? Well, in short, it burns a portion of every transaction called the base fee, and it takes it out from the total supply to never return. In times of high network use, the burn upgrade goes into overdrive, increasing the base fee that is burned, which of course pushes down inflation. So it's highly possible this burn feature with the merge pushing inflation to just 0.4% that there will be many times in the future Ethereum is deflationary, meaning the inflation rate is below 0%. That is something Bitcoin won't achieve until the last Bitcoin is mined, which is projected to happen in the year 2140. But there is one more thing which is going to supply shock the entire Ethereum system like never before or to never happen again. As we know, Ethereum is moving to proof of stake. Miners are going away and proof of stake validators are taking their place. 
and you've been able to stake ETH for almost two years now. The proof of stake beacon chain shipped in December of 2020. Although if you did stake, those Ethereum have been locked. They cannot be withdrawn yet. Checking out the stats on Ethereum's proof of stake chain, we can see there's over 415,000 validators with nearly 13.3 million Ether locked. That's basically $25 billion in ETH. Now when the merge happens, this will still be locked. The upgrade for withdrawals is estimated to happen 6 to 12 months after the merge. So that means $25 billion in ETH plus anything that is added won't be available on the open markets for up to a year and possibly beyond as Ethereum is known to delay upgrades. But when it does happen, won't there be a sudden supply increase? How is that good for Ethereum? Well you guys, there is a queue to withdraw. If every single validator wanted to unlock their staking right away, it's estimated the queue would take about 1.5 years to complete. So my friends, reduced inflation far below Bitcoins, a burning mechanism possibly bringing inflation below 0% and $25 billion plus in locked ether, it all sounds great, right? Well, we do have to look into the risk involved with this, as it's possible it doesn't go all to plan. Yes, Ethereum has been testing this with all its test nets, and it's worked out with every single one of them, but this is a big change. It's like changing your car from gas to electric while speeding 70 miles per hour down the freeway. The chain has to continue running without stopping. And it's possible that the mainnet merge doesn't happen smoothly and the blockchain grinds to a halt. That would mean a chain restart would have to happen before the merge. That's not good and would put a damper on Ethereum's reputation. People would call Ethereum Solana. It would be bad, the price would suffer, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. It's also possible another delay comes as they notice a bug which would cause the network to grind to a halt. This would be better than the blockchain stopping, but again, if a delay comes, the price of Ether would suffer because of it. The biggest risk of all is the forking risk. The Ethereum chain gets split in two as the miners continue mining on the continued proof of work chain. Ethereum has already forked once with Ethereum Classic, but it's very possible a new fork happens on September 15th, the ETHW fork. I covered this a week and a half ago. Chandler Guo, prominent Chinese miner, is the one behind the possible fork. He tweeted, I fork Ethereum once, I will fork it again. He has since then been moving full steam ahead on a fork. Last week he tweeted, ETHW testnet coming soon. And just days after this, he tweeted the GitHub for ETHW and said, the ETHW core development organization has open sourced the first version of the code today. The main functions are as follows. Perfectly diffuse the difficulty bomb. The minor reward for recovering the EIP-1559 burning will be distributed to the miners of each mining pool and adjusted the difficulty of starting ETHW. And already exchanges have started listing ETHW IOUs, meaning the future token has a price. As of yesterday, it was sitting just above $63. And switching to markets, we can see Poloniex, Gate.io, MEXC, Femex, Digifinex, and some obscure exchange have listed the IOU for the token. So it definitely seems like this is going to go down, and that could spell problems for Ethereum. For one, it could split the community. The Ethereum mining community is pretty large, and they are being thrown to the curb. Community splits are never good. But this could also cause big problems for regular Ethereum investors as a whole who decide to start playing around with the ETHW chain as they get duplicate everything, Ethereum, NFTs, and ERC-20s. Chain Debrief put out a great article titled, What are Replay Attacks? Why you need to know them before the Ethereum merge. The article states, with the merge, two chains will now be present proof of work and proof of stake. This will create two versions of your NFTs and assets. This is the primary issue that leaves you subjected to a replay attack. 
This is basically where a transaction that happens on one chain can be exploited to happen on another. For example, you decide to list your BAYC NFT on the POW chain, hoping to cash out and still have a copy to hold and show it off. The issue, however, is that an individual could replay the transaction on Ethereum 2.0, selling your Board Ape Yacht Club on the new chain, leaving you with nothing. Now, an Adam McBride on Twitter tweeted a thread about this replay attack possibility, and one guy replied to the thread, you're just making me more nervous now, Adam, of which Adam replied, join the club. Supposedly, devs are already building bots to try and take advantage of this possibility. Now, if you don't interact with the ETHW chain, then your assets are safe. But if you do, you better take precautions. After the merge, send all your assets to a new Ethereum proof of stake wallet. And then do the same on the proof of work chain. Send all your assets to a new address, a different address than the POS chain. Then continue using only one on that respective chain. You break the link and the possibility of a relay attack. So my friends, the ETH merge should go down in history as a success, as it puts Ether in a position which makes it look more attractive than Bitcoin. But there are risks, and those risks could affect normal investors if they decide to see what the fork chain is all about. Cheers viewers, I'll see you next time.